Greetings and welcome. It is an absolute pleasure to have you here in our new Let's Play series, Season 2, Episode 1. The map that we are going to play in is Fisher Enclave from the Sunset Harbor DLC and have decided to simply name the city after the map name. The idea that I have is to build a city on select vanilla maps and if everything goes according to plan, we'd have an awesome collection of cities built on each map. If you are new here, I am Captain Obvious, primarily a vanilla city Skylines player. I enjoy the challenge of completing beautiful cities without the use of any Steam mods or assets whatsoever. The city you are now viewing was completed without any mods. However, for this Season 2 series, I've decided to utilize the vanilla unlimited ore and oil resource mod. And the reason being of why I wanted to use this vanilla mod is due to the opportunity to design an awesome ore quarry in this area. This right here is a perfect area for a quarry and it would be a shame if we were not able to use all the ore buildings in this particular area. On the modless city version, of course, the resource would deplete. Therefore, it would be completely futile to design around a resource area which would eventually become useless in the future. For instance, this oil resource. I've extracted the oil and the oil rigs have become useless. Therefore, I had to rely on ship and air cargo to bring in more resources for the oil processing buildings. I am also going to be utilizing visual mods such as Cinematics Camera for recording and Hide It Mod to remove the volume and distance fogs in the game. It doesn't change the management aspect of the game, it's just a visual mod to make the city more visually appealing. With that said, let's jump right into building. To save on money, we will be utilizing dirt roads to start our city. This is the absolute best way to keep your city moving forward instead of having to wait for when you can afford to purchase your next power plant or other key structures such as the elder and child care buildings. When we have established a stable enough economy is when we can start replacing the dirt for asphalt roads. I usually don't use roundabouts in my city, but since this is a European themed map, roundabouts appear to be the appropriate choice. When making your roundabouts, the bigger the circle is always better because it gives the vehicles enough time to make their turn before the next car arrives. The roads that branch out from the roundabouts will be our main four lane road. Just try to keep that in mind while building your road layout. If your city is right side driving, then your residential and commercial buildings should be on the right side of the tile, while your industry area should be on the left side. This strategy will just make things easier for your trucks to exit the city without crossing paths with your residential vehicles. We will be making an organic grid for our low density area. Use the freeform road tool when laying down your roads. If you use the freeform road tool often enough, it will become natural for you to make organic road layouts and be able to break away from the standard grid. Speaking of grid, on the left side, which is our industrial area, we'll have a standard grid road layout. I am merely planning ahead for I intend to remove the dirty industry and replace with high density zoning. European high density zoned buildings are better suited if the buildings are built side by side. I will elaborate further when we unlock high density zoning. Let's not forget to connect our roads to the highway. That has happened to me once too many times already. We will be using the coal power plant as our power source and we will also place water towers in the middle of the roundabout for the time being. And we will also be using the inland water treatment plant for sewage 
instead of dumping our waste into the river. Since we use dirt roads, we can easily afford to lay down pipes and still have money in the bank to spare. We'll connect the power lines from the power plant to the water tower then to our first residential homes. But before you start the simulation, remember to reduce the budget of road maintenance, power, and water down to 50%. You are overspending if you don't drop the budget for these in the beginning. The large gap here I reserved for the placement of the elder and child care buildings. Since the introduction of these new buildings, they have helped to reduce the death rate of the cities that I have built, so you should not forget to add them. We will focus the commercial zoning at that large gap while adding residential and industry in their designated areas. Notice how our bank has never gone negative and this is all because we are using dirt roads and for dropping down the budget to 50%. We'll now let the simulation run until we hit our very first milestone. Congratulations, we have hit the Little Hamlet milestone. The most significant thing about this milestone are the taxes and garbage facilities. You should have more than enough income from hitting the milestone to plant down your choice of garbage facility. In my case, I prefer landfills, which will be replaced in the future. You can now also tax your industry low density residential and commercial buildings for a maximum of 12%. Any higher and your citizens will complain of the tax being too high and will eventually move out. Do not forget to place down your garbage facility before expanding your road layout. Otherwise, your citizens will start to complain about garbage accumulating in the city. It is easy to get too excited on expanding your road network, then realize that you don't have enough money to purchase a garbage facility. Just try to remember that in the Little Hamlet milestone that you should place down a garbage facility, increase your tax, then expand. So far, so good. Our weekly income is at least 1000 and we nearly have enough money for an, an elementary school and a high school. However, education is not a priority at this early stage of the game. We are still in the process of expanding and building a population to tax the citizens for more income. As our city grows, there will be a demand for more power and water. Increase the budget accordingly when necessary. Take note not to increase the budget beyond 100%, otherwise you will start to lose money. Instead, have more money prepared to purchase a new power plant or water structure when needed. We will continue zoning until we reach the next milestone. We are now a worthy village. At this milestone, we have a new unlockable tile, a fire and police station, and we also now have districts available. We will fill in as much as possible in the starting tile before unlocking and expanding to a new tile. We will, however, immediately place down the fire and police stations while we still have the money in the bank for it. Much like the garbage facility, it is imperative to plant down these structures before you accidentally overspend on expanding your road and pipe network. Otherwise, your citizens will start to complain about fire and crime in your city. And just as I mentioned fire, a building in the industrial area is burning. 
Though since we anticipated fire and crime, it is a disaster that is easily prevented. Zoning areas for districts is a good way to control policies in that particular district. For the meantime, I will not use any policies unless absolutely necessary. However, we will utilize districts for altering the low density residential buildings to self sufficient buildings from the Green Cities DLC. This is a personal preference. I just like the building models of the self sufficient low density residential buildings that and they also reduce garbage and power consumption however they do also generate 30 percent less income but money will not be a problem for our city when altering your residential do not zone the entire area completely otherwise they will all be zoned simultaneously Rather, zone gradually as a block rebuilds. I will continue to grow the district until we reach the next milestone. Congratulations, we are now a tiny town. At this milestone, we have activated the Park Life and Industries DLC. And this is where the real money comes in. We have also unlocked landscaping in case we need to terraform some areas. But for the meantime, I will fast forward until I have completed creating the self-sufficient district area. That took a little longer than expected. But we made it through. Don't worry, you didn't miss anything in that fast forward. It was just a gradual zoning of the district. Now, when it comes to zoning commercial, do not zone directly on the intended four lane road because when we finally upgrade that road, all buildings zoned in that area will demolish. Furthermore, the four lane road would be subject to high traffic. So you should avoid zoning commercial or residential on those main roads. Notice that we currently have over 100,000 in the bank with a 2,000 weekly income. Even though we can afford to purchase new buildings or upgrade the roads, we will still focus on expanding. However, I am intentionally not building anything near the banks of the river. We still need about 500,000 in the bank before we can start focusing our efforts on the coastlines. There is still a lot of space for building up north and on the west side before we need to unlock a new tile or to build on the coastlines. We'll start up north, but don't forget that we should avoid zoning anything on the intended four lane main road. We will instead continue with our organic grid across from it. When constructing your organic grid, try to leave a small gap between the block to plant trees. Though from time to time, you should also intentionally create a block with large gaps for high schools, cemeteries, and other service buildings. It appears that we're experiencing some noise pollution near the commercial areas. Since we have over 100,000 in the bank, we can easily afford a hospital to increase the health of our citizens and also deal with the residents suffering from the noise pollution. And coincidentally, the city is beginning to lack power. So this is precisely why using dirt roads in the beginning will save you enough money when there is an emergency. Purchase a second power plant instead of increasing your power budget to over 100%. Otherwise, you will start to lose money. Now we'll just continue to zone more residential as we expand our organic grid until we reach the next milestone. We again have over 100,000 in the bank so I will do some terraforming. 
When our soil availability gets full, we will simply level out the coastline to a more flat surface and as level to the water as possible. The coastline height is very important if you want your ferry piers and fishing harbors to look realistic. Another reason why we are not building along the coastline is because I anticipate flooding while we are terraforming. We are now a boom town which unlocks another tile and makes buses, trams, and ferries available. But it is still too early to be routing public transportation. The population isn't large enough to be experiencing severe traffic. Our residential demands are beginning to spike up again. Just look at how excited the Sims are to move into our beautiful city. We need to prepare more residential zoning areas for the influx of Sims and we should also start thinking about where to place schools around the city. The European high school takes up up to two times the size of a cemetery, so we will need to prepare a large gap for that high school. Speaking of cemeteries, let's not forget to place down multiple cemeteries around our city. Be sure to scatter these buildings as much as possible for they do also provide some happiness around their general area. I cannot insist this enough that you should prepare multiple areas for cemeteries. When a death wave hits, you should have a sufficient number of cemeteries to pick up the dead. Then when it becomes available and affordable, you should have a crematorium near every cemetery built. To increase the lifespans of your sims, add an elder and childcare building in the heart of the city. Take note on the building's circumference area that provides the service and engulf as much residential area as possible. Place the elder and childcare buildings right next to each other for maximum efficiency. Our coffers are beginning to run low with only 18,000 in the bank. We soon will need a new inland water treatment plant and landfill. Much of the success of being a mayor is to anticipate the needs of the city. Do not be caught without any backup funds in your bank. Nevertheless, if necessary, there is always a loan that you can take. Our city continues to grow and we will simply zone the remaining areas with residential buildings. At some point, we will run out of area, then we will have no choice but to unlock a new tile for expansion. If this is your first time here and you like how the city is progressing and has also helped you with your city's gameplay, please consider subscribing. Your views from the beginning to end, comments and likes help grow the channel and lets me know that there is an audience who is looking for the content that I'm producing. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who has been watching. Your kind comments are heartwarming and it inspires me to produce more videos and share my knowledge and experience to help others build their dream city. To generate more income, we will start our park life zoning and place park gates with paths to direct sims to cross large block gaps. This is an efficient way to level up your parks and earn a decent weekly income on the side.
we will do some minor city park detailing by adding more park buildings which will provide enough attractiveness to level up. And we will also of course continue to zone according to the demands of the city. I will let the simulation run until another major event occurs that will require my narrative. We will now begin to educate our citizens by placing down our first elementary school. Education takes time, so don't expect your citizens to be immediately educated when you place down the schools. I am instead preparing the citizens to be educated so when we unlock the high density commercial buildings, they will be ready to go to work and not have that not enough educated workers icon pop up on your commercial buildings. We will also start to upgrade the main roads so it's a little easier on the eyes when looking at the city. To help reduce the traffic, let's not forget to turn off the traffic lights at the intersections. Notice how expensive it was to upgrade these roads. Now realize how difficult it would have been to afford the many buildings that we have purchased if we started with cement or asphalt roads. We will add an alternate exit out from the industrial areas so they would stop bottlenecking from the entrance and back out of the city. Always try to build your industries near the highways to better manage your traffic flow. Let's add a few more park gates to give our weekly income a boost. There's nothing wrong with earning a few bucks by adding a human toll booth. We will not severely exploit this park life trick, but just enough for the city to get by and afford more nice things. You are the mayor of your city. It is completely up to you on how you want to run it and how you want to generate your city income. And after we added a few more park gates, we easily gained enough visitors to level up. Now we'll just add a few more of the new park buildings to add attractiveness to the park. And it is also about time to fill in the block gaps with trees. You can use any tree that you want, but I personally like the conifer trees because I like the dark, rich, green color especially at bird's eye view.
Let's take a look at our city's progress at episode 1 in this season 2 series. We are earning 3,000 weekly income and we have yet to spike up the city's park entrance fee. Let's do that now. So we are earning 1,000 just for the park. We are also over halfway until we can zone high density buildings. So we need around a little under 3,000 more. And our traffic flow is at 95%. And one of our main goals of our city is to maintain an above 90% traffic flow without the use of any traffic management mods from the beginning to about 100,000 population. The city is looking magnificent at tile 1. This is Captain Obvious. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, do express your comments down below. And I hope to see you again in the next episode.